Will there be seven years of tribulation at the end of time? What does the Bible say about this subject? In this video, I'm going to answer two major questions. Number one, will there be seven years of tribulation at the end of time? And number two, if there is a tribulation, will God's people be raptured before the time or will they go through the tribulation? If you've not subscribed yet to our channel, then click on the subscribe button on the bell and on all you receive the notifications when we upload new videos. Why is this an important video to look at? People believe that people will be raptured and then there will be seven years of tribulation, which means that you have a second chance if you still are in your sins. The righteous will be raptured, the wicked stay behind. Yes, they go through a tribulation of seven years, but during that time they can make their life ready with God. Is this what the Bible says? Let's see and answer those two major questions. According to the popular belief, the rapture will take place. Then there will be three and a half years of a peace treaty between the Antichrist and the nation of Israel. And then the Antichrist will turn on the nation of Israel and then persecute for another three and a half years. And then it is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Is this what the Bible says? In this video, we're going to discover the truth. Now, the seven years of tribulation can be found nowhere in the Bible. There is no such phrase or text that says seven years of tribulation. People use Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 to say that there will be seven years of tribulation and that the Antichrist will arise during this time. Now the question is, what is the context of Daniel chapter 9? And secondly, is it talking about the Antichrist or is it actually talking about Jesus Christ? This is a fascinating study. So let's do a quick study of Daniel chapter 9. What is the context? Well, in Daniel chapter 8, Daniel has a vision of a goat and a ram. And then one angel says to another angel that there will be 2,300 days. That's verse 14 of Daniel 8. And then the sanctuary will be cleansed. Then the end of Daniel chapter 8, Daniel says, I do not understand the 2,300 day prophecy. He understands the goat. He understands the ram. He interprets it to be Medo-Persia and Greece, but he does not understand the cleansing of the sanctuary. In Daniel chapter 9, Daniel is praying and the angel Gabriel comes to him again to give him the information that he needs based upon the Daniel 8.14 prophecy, which he does not understand. The angel comes to him and says, I've now come to give you understanding. And he gives him the 70 weeks prophecy that is cut off from the 2300 day prophecy. So if you understand the one, you understand the other. The one starting point, the 70 weeks, is the starting point of the 2,300 day prophecy. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city, that is Israel, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Now, I'm not going to spend time on the details of each section of this prophecy. Click on the card in the upper right corner where I explain this prophecy in detail. The point is here. 70 weeks are determined to anoint the most holy. Well, who's the most holy? Well, that's Jesus. When was he anointed? At his baptism with the Holy Spirit. Verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the anointed, the word Messiah means anointed, the prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. Babylon destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. Now the angel says, there will be seven weeks for this temple to be rebuilt and Jerusalem and 62 weeks added to the seven weeks until Messiah, the prince, the anointed one to anoint the most holy. Listen carefully. 70 weeks to anoint the most holy. What does that mean? Well, it's talking about Jesus as the Messiah when he was baptized. So the prophecy is about Jesus. He's anointing as the Messiah. How can we take one of the weeks and throw it at the end of time? Let's continue reading. Verse 26. And after the 62 weeks, so there's a total of 7 and 62 is 69 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So Jerusalem and the sanctuary will be destroyed again. The end of it shall be with a flood until the end of the war. Desolations are determined. So once again, Jesus is the focal point. It's saying the Messiah shall be cut off, not for himself. While he died upon the cross, 
not for himself, for you and me. Then it says the city will be destroyed again, and the temple. Well, this happened in AD 70, when the Roman army came and surrounded Jerusalem, and then retracted, and then came back a few years later to destroy Jerusalem. So this is Daniel, chapter 9, verse 26. Now let's read verse 27. Verse 26 says, The Messiah shall be cut off, not for himself. Listen to verse 27. Then he, who is the he? Well, it's the Messiah. The whole context, the whole time is the Messiah shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. This is the final week. A day equals a year in time prophecy. So it's the final seven years of the 70 week prophecy. Jesus will confirm a covenant. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years after his baptism, he, capital H, that is the Messiah, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering when he died upon the cross. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. And the people get confused by the last part of the sentence. They say, well, it's talking about the Messiah, but then it's talking about the abomination of desolation. The Jewish nation rejected the Messiah. They crucified him. Therefore, God's judgment came upon Israel when the Roman army came and destroyed the temple and Jerusalem in 70 AD. So very clearly, this is talking about the Messiah. The Messiah confirms the covenant for one week, seven years, not the Antichrist. So let's recap. 69 weeks, Jesus is baptized. Three and a half anointed as the most holy. Three and a half years later, Jesus is crucified, cut off, not for himself, in the middle of the last week, the last seven years. And then the gospel still goes to the Jewish nation as he told the disciples, do not go to the Samaritans or the Gentiles, but stay in Jerusalem. So they were taking the gospel to the Jews still. And then when the 70 weeks were completed in AD 34, the Jewish nation was rejected by God and the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the Roman armies. Let's see what the abomination of desolation is, according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 15 and 16. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee into the mountains. So it says, when you see the abomination of desolation in the holy place, that's the sanctuary, then flee into the mountains. Who? You who are in Judea. That's the literal context of the text. Now let's read the same text in Luke chapter 21, verse 20 and 21. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. And let not those who are in the country enter her. So very clearly, the Israelites had the sign that once the Roman army surrounds Jerusalem, the abomination that makes desolate. Then you flee into the mountains. So very clearly, the context of Luke 21, Matthew 24, and Daniel chapter 9 is not Antichrist, but Jesus Christ. The Messiah that was rejected by the Jewish nation, and hence the destruction of Jerusalem by the Roman armies. Now let's answer the second question. Will God's people go through the tribulation? I'm just going to give you a couple of texts to prove that God's people will not be raptured before the tribulation. They go through the tribulation. God always takes His people through the tribulation. He does not remove them from it. Matthew 24, 21 and 22. Based upon the abomination of desolation. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So very clearly, the elect goes through the great tribulation. Revelation 7 verse 14, God's end time people, the 144,000. And I said to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The 144,000 goes through the great tribulation. They are not raptured before the time. Then Daniel 12 verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up 
the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble or a great tribulation such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book of life. So God's people written in the book of life goes through the time of trouble. Now which time of trouble is this? Well, if you read verse 2, it talks about those who rise from the dead, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Compare it with 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, that when Jesus comes, the dead are raised from the graves. So Daniel chapter 12 says God's people goes through the tribulation. And then Revelation 13, 15, He, the second beast, working with the Antichrist, was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. God's people goes through the tribulation. They will be persecuted for standing for what is right. Do not listen to these soothsaying sermons, the ones that, you know, it's just soothsaying, just lulls you into a false state of comfort that we will be raptured before the tribulation. God's people will go through the tribulation. They will be tested on the final point, which is the mark of the beast. God's people are not taken from this. God's people are empowered to go through this. Do we find the seven years of tribulation in the Bible? No, we don't. Do we find a great tribulation in the Bible? Yes, we do. Will God's people be raptured before the seven years of tribulation? No, they won't. Will they go through the tribulation and be empowered by God to stand? The answer is yes. If you've learned something new, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, click on the bell, and on all to receive the notifications when we upload new videos. If you want to donate to the self-supporting ministry, you can use the details below. May God bless you until we see each other again next time.